thank you. Thank you, Korea. Thank you all for your great applause and for being here today to be part of this Iron Man. This Iron Man, to me, the Iron Man is a metaphor for three venues, three venues in which individuals can go beyond their self imposed limitations. Today, I'm going to talk about the Iron Man, and I'm going to talk about it in three parts the swim, and during the swim, I'll talk about adapting. And I'm going to talk about the bike. And during the bike, I'm going to talk about discipline. And during the run, I'm going to talk about persistence. The swim is a concern as the athletes migrate down to Chungmung Beach. Everyone takes notice of the conditions. Today might be tougher than expected, but this is an Ironman. Assessing what's to come, over a thousand athletes gather. Some test the waters, others prepare mentally. For many, this will be the biggest physical accomplishment of their lives. For others, it's simply another challenge in life, a feather in the cap, so to speak. Gregory Burns, 48. As a painter, I oftentimes start a painting without a clear direction of where I'm going, what I'm going to do, and I just start into it. And sometimes when, I don't, when I'm training, I don't really want to get in the pool and swim. But I know if I get in and just get over the hump, I'll probably finish the whole workout. I know if I take the first step, the second one will probably be easier. So there's that momentum that you build after starting. You know, I think we all have notions or ideas or a feeling of what we can and can't do and what we need to do and um, to me that's what challenge really is is when you come up against something that you you know you're meant to do and if you know you're meant to do it then you have to do it have a good chance. one of the most limiting thing is just not not even trying I got polio when I was a year old I think the way I grew up was pretty much as normal as it could be since my mother was very uh, proactive and very she wanted me to grow up like anybody else, so she didn't really baby me, and she didn't keep me from getting knocked around, which I think is good. She let me fall down and do things that, um, that made me stronger. And I think that was probably what made the big difference in the long run, was that um, left to my own devices, I figured out the way to do it, what I had to do. So today I'd like to talk about three things that maybe will help us to overcome our challenges. First is finding strengths. For you, that could be finding your edge. Um, for, for me, it's also sometimes to do with less is more, focusing on what I have and not what I don't have. Second thing I'll talk about is making a way. How do we make a way when there seems to be roadblocks? How do we get to yes when everything around us is sometimes no or maybe or can't? And thirdly is finding a tribe. Finding a tribe and using a tribe and working with a tribe. The other thing about tribes is I think that's where we inspire other people and that's where we get inspired. Oftentimes, I like to go with my mother shopping to the supermarket. And invariably, somewhere between the Cheerios and the Pop-Tarts, I'd fall down. And I'd be on the ground, and my mother would look down, and I'd be trying to struggle to get myself up. And as a five-year-old with crutches and braces, and just learning how to get my feet on the ground, so to speak, it took a while. And all the time, I'm struggling to get up, all these other mothers are looking at my mother and thinking, this woman is crazy. Why isn't she helping up this poor little crippled boy? And my mother had to withstand these stares and these, because she knew what they were thinking, and waited patiently until I got up. And then we went on our way. I learned a couple things there. I, I learned really what's on the bottom shelf at the supermarket. But I also learned that it's, it's not always a good idea to follow or listen to the fears and the opinions of others. The fir actually, the first, uh, the, the first mountain I did climb was actually the, uh, there was a pile of dirt next to my second grade classroom, and I, I climbed that. And, but that, that kind of got me inspired to climb bigger mountains. And, 
And, I, and then, I, then when I was about 24, I said, you know, I heard about this marathon in Hawaii, and I thought, I'd like to do that. And I was living in California at the time, and I rode in. It was not like today we have internet. I rode in, and I, I applied, and I got my, my bib number and everything. I went, went to Hawaii, and I, I didn't have m m enough money for a hotel, so I slept in the park next to the starting line. And 6 a.m., bam, the gun goes off, and every, you know, everybody's running and running. And 8 a.m., the fastest runners are, are finished, and the 10 a.m., most everybody's finished. By 12 o'clock, they'd actually taken down the finish line, and every, Waikiki went back to being Waikiki, and, and I was still out running. And I didn't know any of this, because I was out somewhere in, in Haleiwa or somewhere out there. You know, and here I'm running along, running along, and, and I had my number on, so I, I knew what I was doing. And people would drive by and say, what are you doing? I said, I got my number. I'm running the marathon. They oh, that's cool. And they'd run out, they'd drive back home, and then they'd come back, and they'd give me a, a bologna sandwich or a 7-Up or something. And people kept you know, asking me all day, what are you doing? What are you doing? And finally, around 6 o'clock, this, this guy says the same. He comes by, says, what are you doing? I tell him. I say, I'll be right back. And, yo, fine, that's great. So I keep going, I keep going. And about half an hour later, this black van drives up. And I thought it was the KGB or something. And out the, jump, the doors open up, and out jumps this film crew, like these guys here today. And they start filming me and interview. So, Mr. Burns, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? What are you? I just talked, and I kept going. And, and then they disappeared. And about 9 o'clock at night, I see this bunches of people as I'm running back towards the finish line. There are all these people yelling and screaming, going, go, go, go. And, and, and by the time I got to the finish line, the finish line had been brought back. <laughs> and there, as you can see in this picture, like 100 people waiting and cheering me on. So I got my t-shirt, my finisher's t-shirt. I came in dead last. I did it in 16 hours. So. But you never know until you try. And that's what I always said. And, uh, a few years ago, I tried to do something called an Iron Man and was able to complete that. And uh, y again, you never know what you, until you try. So, what about you? What about your lives? Where are you right now? Is it time for you to depart? Is it, are you in the middle of some initiation? Is it home? Are you home? Is it deciding to change? Deciding, making your intention clear. What is it you want to do? Where do you want to go? Have you taken the first step? Because you know, if you take the first step, the second one's always easier. I think that having a disability, any kind of disability or any kind of challenge, forces you inadvertently or on purpose to, to appreciate what you have and to uh, make everything count. Probably it's because as I was growing up, people always would assume that I couldn't walk to the supermarket or to the 7-Eleven to buy a Slurpee. They assumed it was too far. And I really wasn't interested in knowing what they assumed to be right or wrong. I just wanted to know how far it was so then I could make the decision on whether I could walk there or not. But I think the bigger disabilities are in our minds and in our hearts. And I think that if you have a desire, a dream, a, um, a passion, for life or a job or a relationship or whatever that is, if you can pursue that and, and push that, then you succeed, no matter what your ability or disability is. Disabilities can at times be blessings in that they challenge us, they push us, they make us become more than we would otherwise be. We all have different challenges. We're all different in many ways. <clears throat> but what we need all to do is not to be limited by our limitations. Thank you very much.